Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Are you ready? Shall, shall we read together? Okay, I want to hear your voice reading the scriptures now. It is on screen. Uh, we are reading from the New King James Version. And so we're going to read together. One, two, three, go. Thank you. You have tried. Have your seats so that I can read for you more clearly. And those of us who are online. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 says that I'm going to read from basic English translation. You, you have read from New King James Version, but let me read both of them. New King James Version says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Please take note of the word ministered. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now, I am going to read the same scripture from basic English translation Bible. And this is what it says. And while they were doing the Lord's work and going without food, take note of what he's saying now. Ah, the person on screen is just... And while they were doing the Lord's work, while they were doing the Lord's work, now, King James, New King James says, as they ministered unto the Lord. Basic English trans translation, BBE. While they were doing the Lord's work, they are now not saying as they ministered. They have interpreted the word ministered for us. So while they were, while they were doing the Lord's work and going without food, instead of saying fasting, they are interpreting the meaning of fasting for us. The Holy Spirit said, let Barnabas and Saul be given to me for the special work for which they have been marked out by me. Now, let's read the same scripture from World English Bible. Today, we are looking at it from many renderings. As they served the Lord and fasted. Now, notice here, they are not saying while they were doing Lord's work. They are not saying as they ministered. They are translating it in a more closer way. As they served the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate by numbers and solve for me for the work to which I have called them. The topic of the ministry of the word today is how to minister to God. By the grace of God, we are going to learn shortly about how to minister to the Lord. Ministering to the Lord means what? What does it mean when I say I want to minister to the Lord? I am ministering to the Lord. Basic English translation in the praise is it as doing the Lord's work. World English Bible in the praise in the praise it as serving the Lord. So ministering to the Lord, according to those two renderings of the Bible, is serving the Lord or doing God's work. So when we serve the Lord or engage in doing his work the way he has called us to do, we are ministering to him. So that means then, ministering to the Lord is meeting his need. Meeting the Lord's need. God 
is great. God is omnipotent. God owns all things, but God has a need. And he has a need that he can never meet without us. So God is rich in all things, yet God needs us to meet his need. And ministering to God then means meeting the needs of God. For example, God can do all things, but he can never praise or worship himself. That is a need that he has that only us can meet. When you meet somebody's need, it refreshes them. So ministering to the Lord means we refresh God. We give him pleasure. See, God created you and I in his own image and likeness. Anytime you have a need and somebody comes to minister to you by meeting that need, they give you pleasure. They, they refresh you. You feel good. Their ministry nourishes you. You enjoy because they have met your need. Today's teaching is so powerful because you need to see God from another point of view. Because Ah, there are certain things that you don't access in the kingdom of God unless certain dimensions of God are known. And you will never access them if you are not taught. Every new realm you get with God has to be carried by a new revelation that pertains to that realm. So if God is taking you to the next level, there has to be a next level revelation. The highway to progress in the kingdom of God is what has been revealed to you. So when God is about to promote a man or woman, he reveals a mystery about himself that he didn't know before. There is nothing I've read the whole Bible like God promoting you without a new revelation. For every new level, there is a revelation that takes you there and sustains you there. So basically, our lives are a demonstration of the revelations we, are, we have accessed. Your life never goes beyond what you know about God. When it comes to the realm of the spirit, you can never get saved if Christ is not preached to you. Your name cannot be written in the book of life if Christ is not the way, the truth, and the life to you. So there has to be a revelation in that dimension for you to enter heaven. That's why I'm saying every dimension of God you enter is carried by a revelation. So I have come to show you another dimension of God where God has needs. And where God longs for somebody who can meet his need. It is another level of relationship with God which is not common. You are, 
you are, if I can say, your stature in life can be defined by the caliber of people you serve. Should the president of a country say he has a need and you happen to be the one appointed by state house to meet that need, the nation will honor you. It means by meeting the need of the president, then your level in life and citizenship has been upgraded. If you're going to meet the need of somebody in the slum, which is still fine, the nation may not know you, but if you give flowers to the president at the airport, there is a stature. Everybody wants to greet you also. God is a great king. <laughs> and when he gives you an opportunity to minister to him, it will upgrade you automatically. Angels will recognize you. The cloud of witness will recognize you because you met the a need of a great king. So ministering to the Lord then is a revelation the body of Christ needs to have. There is an anointing, a power, a move, a position you can never have in the kingdom of God if this revelation is not known. It's true. So, the Bible says, as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting. It is not saying they were ministering to the people. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted. Ministered unto the Lord. As they served. As they worked for God. And fasted. God spoke to them. Very quickly. Write this. God does not meet his needs. We meet his needs. He meets our needs so that we can meet his needs. Now, that might have passed somebody. Don't listen to a religious spirit. Listen to me now. God under heaven here doesn't minister to himself, does not meet his needs. He meets our needs so that we can meet his needs. So he gives us what it takes to minister to him. So he meets our needs with an expectation that the meeting of our needs empower us to meet his needs. Translating into this, that everything God gives us, including the breath of life, is so that we are empowered to minister to him. All right? Have you written that one? Very well. Never forget. On earth, God does not serve himself. He does not do things for himself. It is those who understand that privilege that serve him and do things for him. Why does God do that? So that, ah, nah, nah, are you ready? Hey. Why does God desist from meeting his needs? Because he can send angels. He can cause angels to preach. 
He can use his divine creatures, celestial creatures, bodiless creatures. Why does, does God give man the honor of ministering to God? Why does God sit on his throne and say, I am needy and I'm looking for somebody to meet this need on earth? Why? Because God is not incapable. He can create many more angels. Because he wants to give man a position no other creature has. He wants to lift man before, be, beyond the angels. And give man the honor of God. And the way to do that is to allow man to touch him. So if what you are supposed to do is done by an angel, you lose your honor. Bible says we, God, desires so much to lift us that we shall judge the angels. As powerful as Michael is, as powerful as angel Michael is, as powerful as Gabriel is, they are waiting for us to, to decide their rewards. Bible says we shall judge what they did. So after Jesus judging our case, he shall give way for us now. And the angels are simple and the way to what we are going to say. So for God to allow you to meet his need, it means he has highly lifted and honored you. It's a privilege. So he does not behave like he can't meet his need to need us because he's needy per se. It is to give us a place and an opportunity that he cannot give any other creature. It is a privilege. Anybody who meets your need can access your life. Easily. It is not possible for somebody to meet your need and you don't open your door for them. If you allow me to meet your need, what happens is you have opened your heart for me. If you look around, you'll see that is the philosophy of the earth. So if I welcome you to meet a particular need in my life, it means that I honor you. Why you not somebody else? Because you have a special place in my heart. By the way, let me slot this one in. The easiest way to interact with the devils is to allow them to meet your needs. Because it's an honor you are giving them. That is why the Bible says if, if, if a greedy person gives you food, don't eat it. There's a scripture like that. That's the best way to say it. <laughs> the Bible says Stingy person, stingy. If they give you something, don't take it. Should I say I need shoes? Buy those shoes for me. It's an honor. I'm giving you a privilege to access my life. Hmm. The greatest need under heaven is called intimacy. Everybody in this service today and listening on, online needs to be intimate with another human being in a way. Intimate in business, intimate in marriage, intimate. That intimacy creates a coexistence among be human beings. But intimacy 
can never cre be created or formed unless the two individuals meet each other's needs. The first reason why Matenge married Nancy was not children. Because if they had, if, if, and if they don't have children today, they will still be husband and wife. They will still love each other. You have many couples who don't have children. But the first reason he married her, he wanted intimacy. To be intimate with somebody. Correct? But it never remained a word. There was a bedroom. Where a particular need was met. Up to today, it is still being met. <laughs> that has created a position where he ministers to his wife. And the wife ministers to him. And that makes them one. So there is a level of oneness with God you can never access if you don't know how to minister to the Lord. There is an intimacy with God you can never have until you know how to minister to the Lord. Just like a wife must understand how to minister to the husband and the husband has to know how to minister to the wife. Thank God you came this morning. <laughs> and many have never understood or been taught how to minister to the Lord. They don't know. God has some intimate things. Some part of himself that needs you. He decided, like he never created us and gave us all things. But some of them you realize, allow me to use you, that you are different, your configuration from Nancy. So that whether you like it or not, she has something you don't have. And that one you have to go for. So that you need her. And so that she needs you, she also you have what she don't has. So God created us. There are certain things we don't have, he has. And there are certain things he, he, we have, he doesn't. He denied himself to create room for intimacy. So that when we come to have intimacy with him through those things he doesn't have, then our relationship with God becomes tight. Oh, When many don't know this, the only way they know to get close to God is by prayer and fasting. But the early church did not just pray and fast. The Bible says, as they ministered to God, fast. Then they fasted and prayed. Can you see they were doing two things? So, those who want bigger relationship with God, bigger position in God, if they don't learn the aspect of meeting God's needs, their fasting and prayer cannot sustain their relationship with God. You know when you pray and you fast, you are telling God things outside him. When you minister to his need, you are touching his soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pastor Madenge, I can use you once more. You can tell Pastor Nancy I love you a million times. Even lick her cheek. That is not enough. If you continue like that, and that's where you reach, now we will have a counseling session in my office. <laughs> because although you are telling her words, you are kissing her. You have not reached to the core of your relationship. And many are kissing God. Telling him all manner of, I love you. 
I love you, Lord. You are more than a thousand. And they are telling him sweet words, but they have never gotten to the core of intimacy through ministering to the Lord because they don't know. <laughs> there is a place Apostle Edwin touched Susan that makes Susan never to think of leaving him. <laughs> he ministered to her. You know, I like coming down to the earthly realm for you to understand. Because <laughs> if, if, if I go to heavenly realms and I'm speaking idioms, I come at your space for you to get my message. So if you tell Susan there is a man like Edwin, she will tell you, I have not tested that man, but I know where this man, how he ministered to me. So leave me alone. <laughs> there is something Apostle got in Susan that makes him keep looking at her. She ministered to a need that had bothered him his whole singlehood life. <laughs> Nobody else! That's why up to now they sit next to one another. <laughs> How close are you to God? That's a question. Is God, does he take pleasure to take a seat next to you? If God comes to church and there's an empty seat next to you, we he really like to choose your seat because you can minister to him. This is Sister Joyce. She has never found somebody to minister to her who can occupy the next seat to her. That's why she's alone. Because that person, she's still waiting. So you can see her seat is single. Pastor G, there's a seat here for her husband. Because the relationship is different. God can sit alone in your life like in Joyce. Because you have never touched an area in his life which only you can. We are millions of believers, but each one of us has a place assigned by God where only you can touch him. Others can never touch him on your behalf. Because God is too big for you alone to touch him everywhere. It takes billions of people to touch his. He needs a touch here, a touch here, a ministry here, a ministry there, and he's so big. Bible says the earth is his footstool. Think about how big he is. He sits on the circle of heaven. The universe cannot accommodate him. It means you can never delegate your ministering to the Lord to somebody. Because he will be missing the part of you. Hey. And that is the place when you minister to him, you are a location in the chambers of God where you enter, where your relationship with God goes to a level it has never been before. Because there is a place for Pastor Madenge where only Nancy occupied. I'm sure you are the one who bought the bed. And that bed you bought before you marry her. And you prepared it. Only her can occupy. There could be a million women, but you are waiting for this one. It was a special place for her. There is a bed God has prepared 
for you as a person, a special room where he can lock himself with you for a special moment and relationship. Amen. When we come to a church like this, we can be many, never been deceived. Every one of you must minister to the Lord individually in a special way. If you don't do that, although God has a bed for you and a room, it stays empty. Hmm. The closest man that has ever been in your life is this man. I have always seen you dressed up. But he sees a part I can never see. Because also he ministers to you. In a way, nobody can. Therefore, you don't mind showing him that part. <laughs> Meaning, to some of you, God is always dressed up. You have never seen a particular part of God. Hmm. Because you have never Entered a special place to minister where God can strip himself naked for you to know him as he is. So God, to many, is blurry. Blurry. You, you know him in a very small, minute way because he clothes himself. He appears to you in shadows and image. To some, he has never appeared. He rather used Ntonke to speak. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I want to show you some guys in the Bible who ministers to the Lord. And you are now going to choose how to minister to your God. Are you ready now? Okay. You know, I've walked with God for some time. I ask him questions. I have seen people who are expert in prayer, yet they are far from God. You don't see glory. Others are expert in fasting. But they believe if they do that with all their heart, their mind, and soul, then they'll be very close to God. To their disappointment, they end up not being close to God. Because the Lord showed me this, my son. There is a way to get close to me. Many don't know. Go show the church. Ah. Can we finish this? <laughs> Can we finish this? Let me show you five things that happen when you minister to the Lord. Then I show you the details of how to minister to the Lord. Number one, very quickly. You have to write quickly now because of time. What happens when we meet God's needs? What happens when we minister to God? Number one, God takes pleasure in us. God takes pleasure in us. To take pleasure means... We, we um, minister to his heart. Like Jacob said, Ezo, go and do the game hand. So my heart, Ezo, go minister to me. Make the Zavarin soup that I love. So my heart, you may minister to my heart so that my heart can bless you. You see? So as I take the suffering soup, I will take pleasure in you. When I take pleasure in you, Izo, I'm going to pour the blessing I have in me into you. So I'm explaining there is a place in God that needs to be pleased. There's a place in God that needs to cause God to smile whenever you pass. 
This one gives me pleasure. So one of the things that happen when you minister the Lord is that the Lord begins to take pleasure in you. Number two, what happens when you minister to the Lord? He becomes more intimate with us. God becomes more intimate with us. I came to know church since God is the one who reveals himself to his people. When you become more intimate with God, he reveals to you things that he does not reveal to other people. Hmm. Because revelation is caught in his presence. He will whisper things because of your closeness. Hey, let me give you an example. I'm, I'm on the second thing, but let me give you an example of this intimacy we are talking about. Intimacy simply means his presence. Now, if I talk to somebody who is at Kiambu Road, I say, hey! My name is so and so. They will be doing like this. What are you saying? Because they are far. So if a vehicle is passing by, they will not hear me because they have been distracted by the noise of the vehicle. Now, if that person now relocates from Camp Road to the parking, now I'm speaking from the same position. Hey! I'm telling them what I'm saying. They are not training like they are in Camp Road. They are hearing better, right? But still, if I'm bad, quick, or something happened, they will still train to hear me. But if the person comes to the door over there, I say, hey! I talk to them. Now I'm more clear. If they come where I am, even if a vehicle is passing or noise all over, they will still hear what I'm saying. That means that intimacy makes you hear God loud and clear. And you can never get to that clarity of God if you don't minister to him, for you can never get close to somebody you don't minister to. Pastor <laughs> Madenke, can I use you again? When Nancy is cooking in the kitchen and you are watching TV, say, hey, babe! You shout, right? So that she can hear. She's far. You are the city. Still, she will struggle to hear you. But when you are in the bedroom, hello, whisper. You know, that kind of closeness, certain things must never be heard outside. Because they only belong to two people. That is why some people know God better than others. Remember this. Remember, remember. Remember Jesus would speak to his disciples clearly, but to others in parables. Because there are particular mysteries which can only be heard by people who are more intimate. <laughs> so you don't just hear God because you fasted and your spirit is open. There has to be intimacy. Huh? So, 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 so listen now. Uh, I've heard people say, teach me how to hear God. Teach me. Hearing God is not taught. Just like hearing your mother is not taught. You stayed with your mom. Slept on her chest. Had her speak every day. Intimate, so intimate until it is called mother tongue. You never went to, cl to class to learn your mother tongue. But your closeness to your mom was deep enough to make you angelio. It didn't have day. Mother tongue. If you were away from your mom, away, no intimacy with your mom, not breastfed from your mom, but a muzungu, you'll be twenty. Hey there. Because that's the person you're close to. 
So people say, teach me how to hear God. Nobody can teach you how to hear God. You only learn when you are close to God. <sighs> when you hear my voice, you will say that is Pastor Charles. Because you have stayed close to me. I'm your pastor. You hear me every Sunday. Another person who has never listened to me, I can talk. You ask them, who is that? They won't know. So you can never teach them about my voice. Voice is unique. You, it's not mathematics. You can't say the voice of God is one, two, three. So people waste time saying, teach me how to hear God. Hearing God is not taught. You hear direct, then you know. Can you teach me how sugar test? Can you explain? Only eating it. The voice of God is so unique that people say, God spoke. Say, explain. They can't. And just know he, he spoke. So people buy all kinds of books. Teach me. Teach me how to hear God. How to hear his voice. Ha, la, 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 la. How did Moses hear God? How did he learn how to hear God? He was close to the burning bush. God drew him close, close, close. Then he knew this is God. So, ministering to the Lord, that's what number two? Huh? You become more intimate. God becomes more intimate with us when you minister to him. And I've shown you the advantage of this intimacy. One of which is clearly hearing him talk to you. Number three, what happens when we meet God's needs? We attract his empowerment and divine resources. <laughs> you cannot be in the presence of a great king and come out empty. It is known that even King Solomon, when he visited the queen of Sheba, he gave her a lot of gold and silver. So you must understand that when you get close to God by ministering to him, he will empower you with divine resources. You come out. <laughs> Wait, who is working here? You or Susan? You work in the bank. She waits at home. Who eats the money? <laughs> now I want you to tell me why you don't give your money to that lady. Isn't she a Christian? But, and a sister? And a woman? Is she a man? Why, why don't you give, her man, you, you, you give her your money? I will tell you why. She has never been intimate with you. So it means intimacy causes God to release. <laughs> and there are dimensions also of kingdom wealth that are not determined by just tithing and offering intimacy. Mm. You are looking like me, like I'm speaking Greek. <laughs> there are kingdom treasures you can never get until you are in bed with God. Let me say something. Oh, this is good. <laughs> I want to use Edwin again. Please excuse me. <laughs> Did you realize outside the bedroom uh, you have a lot of complications to Susan? You can tell her why do this, this, take this, take this. But inside the bedroom there are no rules. <laughs> there is no wash my shoes. There is no... You know, when you are intimate, that time, there is only love and good words. You forget all our mistakes. Correct? She forgets all your mistakes. I don't know whether she sings or what she does, but she forgets. Okay? There is a place you get with God where he has no laws on you. No law. He doesn't bless you because you are this or that. Intimacy alone. 
Some ladies say the best time to ask your husband for the impossible <sighs> is intimate time. Once he is experiencing your ministry, asking for a car, you know there are no rules. <laughs> But once you are outside in the sitting room, you are seated there watching TV, you are seated there reading a newspaper, you ask, see the response. Is, he, is your husband? Yes. You are his wife? Yes. Has the relationship changed? No. But certain things are not asked for outside certain perimeters. Ah, I'm teaching you more than you can take. You know, Jesus taught about marriage through Paul. But Paul changed it and said, it's not about marriage. I show you a mystery. Yeah. So God creates physical things to teach us deep spiritual mystery. That's why I relate to people to explain. David did a very grievous sin. And the prophet came, revealed it to David, and they said, in fact, he has not judged you. You are forgiven. <laughs> Can you imagine? Because David was a man intimate with God. Other people did the same. They are in hell. <laughs> Saul did a very simple mistake. Simple like this. Mm -hmm. Saul. David ate the show bread. He got away with it. Look at the two men. David is a man after my own heart. He ministers to me. I don't care what he has done. Can you minister like him? That's why when a man loves his wife, you don't tell him about the wife's mistakes. He doesn't care. Can you minister to him like the wife? You are wasting your time. When you notice this man loves his wife, never tell him anything about her. Because he will, he will never listen to you. On a scare mother-in-law. That's why you are fighting with your son. Chase this woman. Get this woman out of here. Mother-in-law. You want her out. The son has refused. Now you are saying she's keeping a witch. No, that's not a witch. She ministers to him in a place you can't. Although you are his mother. So stop wasting your time. These people love each other. Leave them alone. A man shall leave his mother and his father. And being joined to the one who can meet a need. <laughs> God teach my people. There is a place they will never get if they don't know how to minister to me. God teach them. They will never get. Oh, so means adding to the Lord. You attract His empowerment and divine resources. Number four, what happens when we meet God's needs? When we minister to God, we live godly lives. I have come to realize. You can never live a proper and godly life if you are not this person who ministers to the Lord. What is a godly life? <laughs> First of all, let me correct your understanding. Godly life is not when you imitate God or you aspire or you try to live right. Godly life is when God becomes you, you become God so that there is no difference. In other words, he imparts you with himself. So when you walk, God is walking. When you sit, he's sitting. When you touch, God is touching. That's what is called godly life. It is not what you think about correcting yourself, trying to be perfect. No. To live a godly life is to live like God. <laughs> is to be a portion of God walking on the earth. I have noticed when, when Edwin smiles, even if he's, Susan don't know, she also smiles. These people, kitu. 
So they are so together for a couple of years that actually she can feel what the husband is feeling. Even if they are not together. And the husband can start to feel like what the wife is feeling. So that is as a result of intimacy, which is meeting of needs that cause them to be like that. So to live a godly life is to smile when God smiles. Because you are so much into God, God into you, that actually you react the same. Hey. How many of you have seen that when couples are married for a long time, they really start also to resemble? Their mannerisms, their behavior. Hmm. So when you are now ministering to the Lord, the part of intimacy, which is point number three or two, point number two, what happens is because of the intimacy thing, you start living godly life. I will tell you this. You can never live a godly life by reading a book. Because you cannot live godly from without. You only live God, godly life from within. You have to be what you live. If you struggle in certain dimensions of God to live like that, it means you are ungodly in that area. You, you lack God in that area. You cannot live like God. Only God can live like him in you. Uh-oh. You, you know, ah, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop this so that I can, I can be godly. It's not like that. You can't stop anything. You strangle. Nancy is not trying to be Pastor Wife's wife, Pastor Madenke's wife. She's not trying, she is. So she's not strangling, she is. Because she is intimate. <laughs> In your area of strangle, it is an explanation of an area of God's need you don't meet. Yeah. Absolutely. It's true. Because you cannot meet that one in God and God does not impart himself in you. And when he imparts himself in you in that area, you become him, he becomes you. Can God be broke? Okay. Can God sin? So there's a place you get in God. Live alone, live alone by faith, righteous by faith. You are righteous, really righteous. I'm telling you now, Enoch walked with God until he was not. You can walk with God to a place where you don't sin, whether in thought or in doing. Because he lives his life in you. <laughs> and God can't sin. And that can't come otherwise except ministering to the Lord. So when a preacher tells you stop smoking, stop drinking, stop stealing, stop this, stop. More often than not, they are wasting their time. What you need is to be shown God, not to stop cigarettes. <laughs> ah. Man's effort at best will fail. <laughs> Even if they love God like how, it, they will fail. It takes God's power in you for you to live for him. Hmm. Number five, what happens when we meet God's needs, when we minister to God? He preserves an eternal reward for us. Hmm. He preserves an eternal reward for us. I tell you the truth. 
Your reward in heaven is not by grace. Hey. I just told minister this morning, listen, listen church carefully. I'm telling you the truth. Now listen. We become children of God by grace. By grace are ye saved. Through faith. Okay? So the down garment of salvation is by grace. But the reward is never by grace. There are two judgments that we shall face, all of us. One is whether our names are written in the book of life. That will qualify us for heaven. The second judgment after sinners are cast in the lake of fire is to weigh on the scale how much ministry you did for God. So now, every time you minister to the Lord, not only do you access the four realms I've just spoken about, you actually, a treasure is kept aside that will determine the kind of crown you're going to carry in eternity. Jesus, I say it, is not sitting on the right hand by grace. He died on the cross. He ministered to his father. A need that God wanted met because God wanted to save man. But he had nobody to meet that need. Only Jesus volunteered. He said, my father, my father, I see you love the whole world. And you want somebody to go down there and die. I'm going to die. I'm going to minister that need, God, for you. You are longing for the man you created. You want him back to yourself. But you want now that ransom to be paid. I am there to meet that need. He came here, suffered the cross, met God's needs. He is rewarded. For the Bible says, because of the manner of death he died, he was given a place of honor. Not because of grace. <laughs> so you must understand, grace opens the pearl gates for you to enter. But you can be a commoner in heaven. <laughs> oh, Pastor, are you saying there are ranks in heaven? Absolutely. Absol Listen, even angels have ranks. We have seraphims, cherubims, and they not just get them. They were tested before time for them to get those ranks. It's not by grace. I told people another day, Satan was not tested properly. That's why he did what he did. So you were not there ages before to know the angels, how they qualified to be in Jamaica. What process God took them through. God has been at work in eternity. And eternity is long. So how am I like when I'm a new wakazi? They were fike hapa wako. So you think this angel is just a, like this? No. So in the coming world, children of God, there will be rank. Ranks will be there. I lie. Listen, I lie not. People will walk in different glories. You will know people by the glory they carry. <laughs> in heaven, it will be clear who was who. The good thing is there is no jealousy. Because if they are big, they are your brother anyway in heaven. And just like you celebrate your bro. So they are your brother, they are big. So you have no jealousy, you understand? So don't say tutapitia wapi, tutafanya nini, sasa tutasononeka. Uh -uh. God would have removed human nature of sin from us. But I'm telling you now, your ministering to the Lord defines your future. Eternal future. The hereafter. You understand? The here what? After. And there is hereafter. And the hereafter is longer than here now, by far. Okay. Now, let me finish now. Are <sighs> you getting this thing? How do we minister to the Lord? How? How? How do I minister to the Lord? When I show you how to minister to the Lord, you will think it is not spiritual. Hmm. Because, you know, 
you, 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 we associate spirituality with only spiritual action. Never physical action. I will surprise you by telling you that uh, for you to minister to the Lord, you have to be physically active for him. Mm -hmm. Nobody ministers to the Lord as a spirit. It doesn't happen that way. Let me show you a few things here. Um, I think I'll extend this in another time, the teaching. But for the sake of finishing, um, let's go to Mark chapter 14, verse 3, and then 14, verse 9. Mark chapter 14, verse 3, then 14, 9. I want to show you a ministry unto the Lord. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came. See, a woman came. Now, notice this woman was not coming from prayer mountain. <laughs> And this woman, we are not told her name because there are two women that anointed Jesus this way. One was Mary, but this is not Mary. Because the other one, Mary, he was at Lazarus' house. Correct? Being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper. Now, this is Simon the leper's house. The other woman, if you are in Bible school, it was at Lazarus' place. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Then a woman came and anointed his feet there. Okay? This is a different woman now. Now, this woman is not coming from a prayer mountain. She's just a woman. And Jesus is about to die and be buried, and God has a need at that moment that something needs to happen practically on earth to prepare him. Okay? He has to be anointed to face death. So God has a need. Okay? But the people around Jesus, who seem to be prayerful, who seem to follow him every day, can't meet it. But a woman comes, sees the need, and she's ready. Now let's see what happens. As he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spangnard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Now, before we go to nine, I think we might have to read the following scripture after that. Thank you. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, they can't meet this need, watch. <laughs> The Father in heaven wants somebody who can prepare Jesus. The people within Jesus who think they are close to God are complaining. They can't meet that need. What are they saying? There were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this oil wasted? If you read, you'll see it was contained in heaven. Somebody must anoint Jesus. But these guys are calling it a waste. They can't meet the need. Watch it now. Watch it now. <laughs> oh, I'm about to show you something. You can come to a church like this, find some religious folk and overtake them. You can come to a church like this, find somebody who has been here for years, and in a minute God gives you what you can never give them. So the people who are around Jesus, used to Jesus, cannot meet this need. Can you imagine? God is desperately asking, who can do this? Look at their attitude. Jesus said, let her alone. 
You see, Jesus was waiting for her. He was expecting somebody. He was looking forward. So he said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. She has ministered to me. Woo. Remember, she is not praying or fasting. Because as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, meaning those are two different things. As they worked for the Lord without eating. I like what BBE says. BBE. Well, not BBE. BBE. Not a politician. As they worked for the Lord without eating. So you can see these are two different activities. Yeah. Did you know when you fast and pray, seeking God for marriage, seeking God for money, you are not ministering to the Lord? Actually, it is ministering to the self. You are, you are, you are asking God to do things for you. You are not ministering to him. You want heaven to stop, stand still until you get married. Even stand still until I get this money I'm asking for. Can you call that ministering to the Lord? No. Ministering to the Lord has everything about him and nothing about you at that particular point. So let's go to verse 14 now. Jesus said, She has done. No, let's let's go, let's go where she has done. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body from burial. This is a ministry unto the Lord. She has bypassed Peter, John, guys who are so close, pray every day. She has done something that heaven has recognized. I want you to see the attention Jesus gives this woman and tell me whether it is a common attention. Hey. And then verse, verse 9. Assuredly. Now watch, watch it now. I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Her name will never be erased in eternity. Now there are some apostles, we know what they did. There are others, we don't know what they did. But we know what this woman did. And she was not an apostle. Hey. I told you something you didn't take. This woman was not coming from a prayer mountain. Neither did she know Mutatataro Yakanisa. She just ministered to the Lord. Immediately, she got her position. This position is still in heaven. You will find this woman honored in heaven itself for this work. She ministered to the Lord. I'm showing you practicals now. Are you ready? I told you, ministering to the Lord is never done spiritually as a spirit. It is mostly the use of physical things to touch God's needs. Do you understand? Hmm. If God wants you to minister with spiritual things, he lives in a spirit place called heaven. There he can be ministered to spiritually. Uh -uh. Are you listening now? Do you understand? Uh -huh. It is here on earth when Jesus needed physical oil to touch his head. So no matter how spiritual you are, your physical things as to meet physical needs of God. If you will at all minister to God. Let me show you Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. I show you other people who ministered to Jesus. And they are written in the Bible. You know for your name to be in the Bible you have to be something. Either you have to be Satan 
Or, <laughs> you, you know for the Bible to recognize you by name. Do you know how many people, millions of people on earth that day, and your name happens to be a scripture? Can you imagine ministering to God until your name becomes part of scripture? We read you as a scripture. This is big. Very big. Now it came to pass. And by the way, I am about to finish. Let me in the tour. God showed me Bible will still be read in heaven. It will be there forever. The word I speak shall not pass away. Not even a dot. So if you think you finish with the Bible on earth, why will the Bible be read in heaven? For two reasons. One, to make clear certain things you never knew. Number two, to remind you the activities of God and you on earth, lest you forget. So Bible is still a book of honor. And guess what? The name Saul will be in the Bible in heaven. The name David will be in the Bible in heaven. These names you see, everybody in heaven will keep seeing them constantly. Kuna wengine watapotelea mbinguni. Because, you know, the future is a fast place, you know. You are at the corner of some place. But there are certain people whose names. <laughs> now let me show you this and then we finish. Okay? Let me show you. Now it came to pass after that he went through every city, every village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And then certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Now God here is trying to explain to you the kind of people who can minister to God. They are not nice people with at all. So look at your neighbor say, it is not how nice you are. This woman had seven demons. And yet she ministered to God. Uh -huh. When demon left. So you don't consider your stature in life. In fact, next, when Jesus was anointed at, at uh, Nani's house, it was a harlot. She anointed the feet of Jesus, right? And wiped with, with the hair of her head. And that woman was known to be a sinner. But Jesus received her ministry. Mm. And there was a saint there, supposedly, who couldn't. That's why Jesus said thieves and the prostitutes will enter heaven earlier <laughs> than certain people. Because there are certain things God don't care. You understand? You, do you know there are certain things God don't care? Like, for example, you are Saul, you murdered Christians, but he needs an apostle. And you are present. And you are ready for that need to be met. You are ready to be stoned. You are ready to go under shipwrecks. You are ready. Hey, you don't care whether you murdered. Come here, be an apostle. Meet my need. <laughs> there are nice people who won't do nothing for God. There are evil people who come and do something big for God. Now watch this. You know, I heard a lady say, can God ever accept my offering? I said, why? I don't think I'm nice. I had to lead her to show her the woman who anointed his feet. And I said, can you read yourself here? Did Jesus accept this woman offering? Yes. Are you a harlot? No. Oh, why are you asking that? These are the women narrated here who ministered. And the Bible says, and they provided for him from their substance. Other renderings will tell you they ministered to him from their substance. Ministering to the Lord is always substantial. Do you understand? You read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Ministering to the Lord. And the things that will attract rewards in heaven are substantial. Noam built an ark. It was not spiritual. It was physical thing. 
Jesus suffered on the cross. It was not spiritual. It was real suffering on a real cross. Stop hiding under the spirit. Oh, spiritually I'm connected. Why are you lying to God? <laughs> if it's a crusade and Jesus wants an evangelist, he's a real evangelist with a real microphone bought by real money on a real podium talking to real people. We have a problem when the church people don't know how to connect with God substantially. They keep hiding in the spirit. You don't connect God with God in the spirit. He has enough spirits. We are on earth. God wants some things done for him on the earth by some physical people because the earth is physical. So you are there saying I serve him as a spirit in the spirit. Are you competing with angels? Do you want him to move too from your body so you become a spirit, you start flying around? Everybody who ministered to God in the Bible ministered to God with tangibility. There was nothing like I'm spirit. spirit. It is how you used your material, tangible stuff on God. That will matter. How did you use your physical body to God? How did you use your money to God? How did you use your clothes, your physical things to minister to God? Like this woman used her physical oil to minister to God. It was physical. Let me read for you something else. How to minister to the Lord. Are you ready for this? Very. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 10. And then we'll extend it to Philippians chapter 4 verse 14. And then we start to wind up this issue. Philippians, this thing God showed me. You know, God teach me. He showed me. God shows me stuff, man. You know, these things, you know, you feel so spiritual, you are kneeling down. To, God says, hey, I want to talk to you. <laughs> After you finish praying, please minister to me. Minister to you? Yes. Of, you, you, of late, you don't minister to me. Hi. God, I'm on my knees. Yes, don't disturb me. <laughs> asking for this, asking for this, asking for this. When will you minister to me? <laughs> you, you know, you're praying, thinking you are so spiritual. Heaven is happy. Something tap you here. Hey. You continue praying, it tap you again. Hey. What's that? Minister to me after prayer. Unacha umechanganya kiwa. Sasa, sinirikuwa na naomba na kufunga. Ndiyo ulete revival. Hiyo ziyo ministry. I thought I'm minister. <laughs> Think about it. You, you pray for revival. Pray, pray, pray. But you will never do the revival. There will never be revival. Because you are prayed. But for revival to come, there has to be physical activities. Physical people with physical platforms that raise the dead, heal the sick, get people filled with the spirit, preach the word. Those are all physical. So you are praying and fasting needs ministering to the Lord to accompany it. Are we there in Philippians 4.10? But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length he have revived your thought for me. Eh, in the ESV. No, let's go to New Guinea. <laughs> because that was, was... 
Okay, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to, the, to need, for I have learned whatever state to, let's go now to, to, to 14. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. He continues. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me ministered to me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. This is Paul talking now. Okay? Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that I'm bound to your account. Then he continues. Indeed, I have all and I'm bound. I am full, having received from Epaproditas, not prayers, the things. Say things. The things sent from you. Things sent to Paul to minister to his life. A sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. Now, where is the link between what they are doing to Paul and God? How is God, Paul putting God in? Can I show you? Then we finish. Now, you will never meet Jesus physically. He went to heaven. What you have is the Holy Spirit now here with us, sent by Jesus. To be with us like Jesus was with us. So, you will never minister to God who is in spiritual form with your physical things if you wait for the spiritual God to ask you for a bed. Never. But God, he is still with us and he needs us to minister to him. So how are we going to minister to God and how then do we see his needs? This is how. He said... To those he sent. Those who receive you receive me. And those who receive me receive the Father. Correct. Meaning, when the woman with a lambasta box anointed Jesus, she was ministering to the Father. Because the Bible said, those who receive Jesus have received the Father. Interpretation. Whatever you do, touching my life, you are touching God, the Father. Okay? So now, I need uh, uh, three people very quickly. Maybe Pastor Madenge and Nancy, so people can see uh, he has a beautiful wife here. To stand over here on the altar. Now, Pastor Nancy, you go farthest point. Um, no, Pastor Madenge, you go farthest point. Pastor Nancy here. And then I show people what how to minister to the Lord because they don't know. Now, stand behind I'm behind Nancy, near the altar. You stand here. Okay? In fact, Pastor Nathan can be seated. Pastor Nancy be sitting. Now, Jesus said, come. This is his apostle. Stand like this. When he was leaving, those who receive you I want you to see this is the apostle. This is Jesus. That is God the Father. Okay? So he looked and said, Those who receive you, receive me. And those who receive me, have received the Father. Okay? Now, stand like that. I show you what he meant by receiving. Scripture. Are you ready? Okay, sit there. I show the people. And then I, I, God, we are working this out. 
we should finish. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Then we jump to verse 4, then we jump to verse 7. 4 to 5, and then we jump to verse 7. Luke 10, 1. Luke 10, verse 1. People never get to heaven without ministering to the Lord fully. Uh oh. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Verse 4. And he told them, carry neither money bag, knapsack, or sandals, and greet no one along the road. Verse 7. And remain in the same house. Now, when you go ministering, When they receive you, you knock the door. I'm apostle so and so. I'm sent by Jesus to preach to you the kingdom. Oh, they opened the door. Welcome. The Bible says, let's continue there now. The Bible says, where is the scripture? Remain in that same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worth of his wenches. Do not go from house to house. So now, those people will minister to you. Because I sent you. That is, when they receive you in that manner, it is me they are ministering to. So those who receive you, they have received me. And those who receive me have received the Father. So when they do to you, they are doing to me. And if they are doing to me, they are doing to the Father. Are you seeing now? So now, if I want to minister to the Lord, I will find that Lord in Mutui. Because he's a representative of the Lord. And as I minister to him, I am actually ministering to Jesus. And by ministering to Jesus, I'm ministering to God the Father. Are you seeing? Then you get to heaven and there will be enchantment day. And God will separate the sheep from the God. He will say to the sheep, I was hungry and you fed me. Naked, you clothed me. Hospital, you visited me. Prison. And they will say, when, Lord, did we do these things to me? He will say, when you did these things to one of my own, you were doing it to me. So you were ministering to me direct. Paul was persecuting the church. Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting? He said, why are you persecuting me? Whatever you do to the least of these ones of mine, you are doing to me. So you will never meet God now to minister. Yes, pastor, I understand ministering to the Lord. Show me Jesus now. I want to find Jesus now. I want to minister to this Jesus now. Ah, yeah. I want to minister to him. I want to minister to Jesus. You know, I heard uh, Mrs. Ruto say something that touched me a lot. She was talking about her husband. And she said, many years ago, they went to northern Kenya to a particular church with a husband. And when they went there, the pastor did not have shoes. And she says, the husband removed his shoes. And the, the husband, to, me, to Mrs. Ruto, Ruto himself, years ago, maybe he was not the stature he is as a politician. He removed his shoes gave to this pastor and walked in bare feet. And she said as her wife, it touched her. Do you know that man ministered to the Lord? And do you know he can be a president? He's not, he's not my brother. He's not, I'm just telling you, I'm a spiritual man. Do you know? 
Do you know you can see a man's mistakes, but God can remember his ministry? Do you know the former President Moy? People called him devil and all kinds of things. But 90% of AIC churches and grounds were donated by Moy. He ministered to the Lord in a way that many have never. You call him a grabber. You call him a what? You call the woman a prostitute, but she anointed his feet. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say, I know you are very nice. You, you think when you get to heaven, there will be a great run because you, you lived a nice life, nice. But <laughs> a thief on the cross said, don't you care as we are suffering because of what we did, but this man, the thief, the man encouraged Jesus. Jesus said he has ministered to my life. Because I needed one single encourager. He encouraged Jesus. The other one mocked. He never ministered to Jesus. This one, Jesus said, we shall be together in paradise. You have, have received your ministry. Yet he had no time to come out to pray and fast. A single word that encouraged Jesus was rewarded. So now, For example, you give money to Shiloh. Correct? Why are you giving money to Shiloh? So that you can, many children of God can sit here, get word, deliverance, whatever God will do for them. They are called the body of Christ. Correct? So now, you give money to Shiloh. So people in the future, now they will come find a place to park. Nini. Do you know you are ministering to the Lord? And the Lord is saying that you are providing me a seat in the church and ground, and ground to preach. It is called ministering to the Lord. Somebody has heard about Shiloh and all they are doing is to pray. Yeah, people that are like that because of religiosity. Now they heard about Shiloh. Ah, watch out to Ombe, pastor. 125 million. Hi, guy, Fafa. They have now taken off. They are praying. Hey, God, ba, 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 ba. Ba, Father, let pastor buy that land. Father, they are doing nothing. Somebody didn't even fast. They gave money. Who ministered here? Because Shiloh will not be bought in the spirit. Because some believers are like that. When they hear there is a need in the house of God, they go into prayer. Instead of saying, God, whatever I have, I will meet that need. Jesus needed to be anointed with oil. Oh, Father, send somebody. Dear God, I'm praying for Jesus. While you are praying, a woman bypasses you on your knees. Who is a prostitute? Carrying the oil, not because you prayed. Do you know why the kingdom of God is not advancing the way it should? Many don't minister to the Lord. So the Lord has many needs that are not met. Because the church don't know how to... There is a difference between giving a tithe and a small offering and ministering to the Lord. Ministering to the Lord is deeper. Are you ready we finish? The highest way to minister to the Lord, I will show you. Because it has hierarchies. Say hierarchies. It has hierarchies. But the highest form, I will show you. How to minister to the Lord. The highest way to touch Jesus is to minister to those who are called to preach his kingdom. Did you know that? If I need a car and I'm a businessman and you buy me that car and I'm born again, 
you have ministered to the Lord, but that ministry is a lesser caliber. When you find Apostle Peter, who is trying to drive to some place in Ephesus, but he can't get there, to preach the gospel, you buy him the car, that is a higher level. So your gift attracts a reward equivalent to the level of the person you give. Oh, you don't know that. In the kingdom of God, listen now, listen, lest, lest you are foolish. It is not just giving to anybody. Do you understand? Here is a pastor who is a thief. And all what he collects is for his tummy and himself. Even the church he pastors have no tissue paper. So when people go to the toilet, they carry a cup of water. The toilet itself has no cleaner. You go to that toilet, you meet urine on the way. The, the church is totally not serviced, but he collects tithe and the five offerings per service. He is not a minister of God. Do you understand? Now, when you give there, thinking you are ministering to the Lord, that gift is wasted. Absolutely true. Because this apostle is apostle to the body of Christ. So the things that you minister to him is so that he can turn and be a blessing to the body of Christ. So you are ministering to the Lord because it is about his body. Say his body. So you don't go ministering to everything you see, including dogs. Because there are many dogs preaching. If it is an evangelist, he has to be a real evangelist. See Mkora? If he's a man of God, he has to be a real man of God. Say man of God. Najua kuna watu nilisikia wanasemanga kama nikulipa tithe. Anatafuta ile kanisa iko karibu tu anatupa hapo ndani. Hey. I'm just showing you how to minister to the Lord. Now, I want you I know you want me to take you spiritual now. Take me spiritual. Stop talking about In heaven, you will see a symbol of the Ark of Noah. That thing was not spiritual, it was wood. It took a hammer and the physical things and the timber for Noah to do it. Yet, there's a great reward. It's physical. Say physical. If you don't know how to physically minister to the Lord with the physical things, you will never get that reward. You will live like a spirit all you want. It will never happen. I'm telling you now the truth. For anybody who touched in God and God commended them, in the whole Bible, they used something physical. Everybody. Are you getting it? Please, my team, you can have your seats. Now, let me finish. Let me read you this and see whether I can finish. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8. My God, I should finish this time. Because God spoke to me. God teach them how to minister to the Lord. Many of them need to be intimate with me. But they have to understand how to minister to me. If Jesus can say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It means, if you touch this person who God has sent, Jesus himself, you are touching him. Therefore, your closeness with Jesus is dependent on your closeness to those who belong to Jesus. 
The people will say, I love Jesus, but I hate apostle. You are lying. I guarantee you, you are lying. You cannot love Jesus and hate his people. It doesn't work. For you love him through the people. I am, listen, if you want to hug Jesus, you cannot hug him in the spirit. You have to hug me. Because I stand in his stead. Look at your name and say, if you want to hug Jesus, you have to hug me. Ah, turn to the other one. Say, you, you claim you love him? You can't hug him. He is not here. I'm his representation. So you better hug me now. So it is written in heaven you hugged in Jesus. It's the truth. You will never meet in Jesus somewhere to buy him a suit or shoes. You can only do that to his minister or to other brother, sister. And in heaven he will say, you bought me shoes. Are we there in the Shunammite story? I want to read it for you. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. She was not praying for him. <laughs> she started giving him food. <laughs> See, there were many barren women in Shunem who were praying. None of them got what he got. And she only gave him food. Not prayers. Now let's see. Now tell somebody, pastor is kicking religious devil out of you right now. <laughs> so, Elisha went to Shunem where there was this notable woman and she persuaded him, persuaded. She had that revelation. Persuading a man of God? Now it is the other way. Men of God persuade people. This woman had to minister to the Lord by all means. She forced it. She persuaded him. And then, let me show you now. And she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. Not for a prayer session. Or Holy Communion service. The man of God was passing there to eat. She was ministering to God. This woman. Watch it now. Now, please. And she said to her husband, look now. She went to another level of ministry now. You have to keep graduating in this matter. Look now. I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Since she can't sing God, she has to find the man of God. Amen. And do something to God by doing it to the man of God. What you can never do to those who belong to God, you will never do to God. The hands that receive your offering are the hands of men that God uses to receive his offering. Then he continued here. Continued here. And then, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table, a chair, and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. How, how many of you know this is ministry? <laughs> she does not seem to be spiritual. If this woman is a member of your church, she can't qualify for ushering. She, she's just doing things which look normal. But look, she is in the Bible. In the Bible, God put her there to honor her. She is a scripture now. A common woman is a scripture. Because she gave somebody food and, and, and a place to sleep. 
and some fellows think they are with God. Oh, I feel the spirit. I feel the spirit moving. Say, spirit. Spirit. <laughs> I told you, when you are intimate with your wife, mm. there are certain things mm. that you don't even ask. Mm. They are delivered by default. When you give God pleasure, mm. he makes you pleasurable. So the prophet asked, go ask this woman, what can I do for her? She happened not to have a child. Do you know without her asking for the child? How do I know? Because when the child died, he said, did I ask you for one? She never interceded for it. Do you remember that? God started to meet her need without her prayer. He Yet from day one, she never told Elisha, let us have a prayer session. She never appeared spiritual. She only gave him food and a place. Listen to me. If I was to visit your house, don't act religiously. Just cook. <laughs> you know, oh, pastor, hey, let's pray. Pastor, you see, yeah. <laughs> That is spooky. Kuna jua pasta anakuja kwangu, akuta sikika huku, wacha utona demons huku zitakiona. Cha pasta anakuja. When Jesus visited people, he never prayed one time. Never. He went to Levi, they were just eating. It was party. He went to the wedding, it was party. This prophet in this woman house, eating and sleeping. We are just, just religious lot of people. <laughs> Ata kuna watu wakienda kwa nyumba ya mutumishi wa mungu, wanasema, kwa ni huku pastor haombangi? Because they think pastor should always be on the floor, even in his house. Doing poro 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 poro, poro poro So when, when they are there, the food is shared in pastor's house, and the pastor saying Jesus has blessed it. And we eat, and it's time to go to sleep, and the pastor is not saying any prayer. They say, Aya. <laughs> hey, Pastor Aombi, Natunaenda Kulala. <laughs> there is no one day the Bible says the prophet called woman for a prayer session. So the only thing he used to do is to eat. Yet, we see God opening the womb. Of this woman. Because she touched God in an intimate place. Amen. Where nobody else can. God in heaven gave her a baby. Satan tried to kill it. God resurrected the baby. She was intimate with God. By ministering to God. Some of you can't pray for three hours. And you feel very bad about it. You are not wired that way. You are not wired to pray for ten hours. You are supposed to mean that to the Lord. <laughs> oh, rise up your hand and say, Pastor, help me. Oh. <laughs> we are wired different. Apostle can pray for 10 hours because he's apostle. <laughs> and you are trying to do things that you are not wired for. Mary and the wife of Chusa and others were not in Jesus' ministry for prayer sessions or in the sister department. The Bible says they followed him, checked his needs to meet them. Full stop. You never found them holding hands to intercede for Jesus? Now turn to your neighbor and say, Pastor, see Anamaliza, but stop being spooky. Just tell them, stop being spooky. <laughs> to minister to the Lord. <laughs> And there are believers who feel so guilty, guilty. Oh, you know, when the church was fasting 10 days, I only fasted half a day and I nearly died. <laughs> oh, I feel so weird. Oh, God, I can't fast. <laughs> hey, me, I think I'll live in that little smallest corner in heaven because I don't know how to fast. You, listen to me. There are great men and women in heaven having thrones who never fasted. And they are written in this Bible to show us the power 
of means adding to the Lord. And what can happen? The Bible never says Solomon prayed the Lord. He said he offered a thousand over him. And he became who he was. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I notice you are full of tears and strangling prayers. But you don't know how to minister to the Lord. See, most of the people God used mightily never looked spiritual. <laughs> they did ordinary things. And God turned them into extraordinary people. So, from today, when you want to minister to the Lord, check what you have. Check who you are. Check what you can do. Amen. Check all that. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. Is this good for you? Mm -hmm. By the way, a church that is full of the word means very little deliverance <laughs> from evil spirits. Because these are the things that you practice, you know? They just kick the devil out. This woman why she was not, why she was barren, it was a spiritual matter. It was. How I know is because God spiritually opened the womb. So it must have been, it was spiritually locked. And by her ministering to the Lord, she got delivered from barrenness. Without somebody casting out a demon. Do you know one of the most stubborn demons is spirit of poverty? It is a spirit. It can go through generations. But you kick it out when you minister to the Lord with your money. Actually, the, that, the demon of poverty is so stubborn that you can do a thousand deliverances on a brother or sister and they remain the same, like the Lord. The same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, nothing changes. But let me tell you something. Let this person learn how to minister to the Lord. The poor widow in that path was very poor. Indeed poor. She had no money to buy food. No food to buy. Nothing. She ministered to the Lord. By ministering to the servant of the Lord. Poverty was broken. Like me. I know there is no other way to come out of poverty and lack. If one does not minister to God with their things. Impossible. Absolutely. There's no other way. There is nobody who can deliver you a, 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 a successful deliverance from poverty if you don't learn how to minister to the Lord with your money. Failure to minister to God creates a generational bondage. It's true. Just like ministering to the Lord creates a generational blessing. Father of God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, generational. Always. Because Abraham did certain things physically for God. He took physical Isaac, not as a spiritual Isaac. Okay? He ministered to God. In a place, he touched in God in a way no man has ever done that. And that became a generational thing. So, Anybody, you found luck in your family, found poverty, it is generational. Because in that generation, people never knew how to minister to the Lord. Therefore, it is translated into generational poverty. You have to start a generational wealth. It must start with you. 
you make a decision. Say a decision. Generationally, I'm creating something that my children and children's children will fight. It's true. Did you know some of us, when we went to school bare feet, had so much poverty, it was because of the kind of people who gave birth to us. They never know the Lord. They never minister to the Lord. So we found nothing. No inheritance, spiritually. So we start from scratch and we suffer. Say I'm turning this thing around. Can I stand here and tell you something? My children will never know poverty. Never. Now, if you don't like it, but I'm just telling you, yes. Now, I know you're saying, hey, attacking. If, <laughs> I wish you, you were my blood child because you fit into. <laughs> because why? I have ministered to the Lord with my finances and I know what that translates into. So I don't need a prophet to tell me these things. I know. There are certain things when you do, you can prophesy to the future by the doing. The doing becomes prophetic. See, a stingy person, it does not matter how much they have today. When they die, poverty will come to their children. It doesn't matter how rich they are right now. Things will just scatter. You will find their children pauper. Until now they are hard in the gospel like I'm teaching and then do what their father never did. It's true. So ministering to the Lord gives you a generational, transgenerational kind of stuff. For the sake of your father David Solomon, I will not punish you. Because I remember how he ministered to me, your father. How many of you during deliverance you hear spirits talk about your grandfather, grandmother, how they minister to the devil? And they challenge me. They say, no, no, this one is ours. What? Yeah. Their 15th grandfather was a witch doctor. He ministered to mean devil. So he left a ministration that the devil must reward. So you are delivering this person and demon talking to them is their great grandfather demon because of what they did. The same way God speaks and tells the devil, you can't touch this one because their great grandfather ministered to me. You can't touch. God stands there and protects you. Tell somebody, I cannot leave my children in trouble. I have to minister to the Lord. I have to turn around this thing. They cannot inherit the poverty I inherited. They cannot inherit the sin I inherited. No way. Hey, I finish. I hope it's the last to finish. Jesus. Hey. Hey. Hey, praise the Lord, somebody. He said, God, they teach them how to minister to me. To minister to me. They are God. To minister to me. To minister to me. God told Moses in Exodus 25, I have a need. God said, I have a need. Exodus 25, 1 to 2. And then you go to eight. See, he said, Moses, I have a need. My people must meet this need. I want to come to their midst. And then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. See, I want to come down to the earth, but I have no house. Can you imagine Mungu anatafuta nyumba? <laughs> Na anasema watu wa mjenge mahali akukaa. Haya. Mungu hana nyumba. 
You read these things, think about them properly. Think. Let them make me. Sanctuary means wanitengeneze makao. Duniani, ndiyo nikuje. Ndiyo nikikuja, sina makao. No, kani ikala ya yaani. So Moses, I have a great need, but it must be met by my people. So he told them, tell them I need a home. Let them build me a home. And the Bible says he was told, let them give. So that me and God, I can come there. And find a place where I can dwell. That was a need God had. Correct? And they ministered to God. But God cautioned Moses, the ones who are willing. Do you know the other day the Spirit of God revealed to me, you shall know in heaven everybody who ministered to this sanctuary. By name in heaven, you shall know them. Because it's a replica of this sanctuary in heaven. And they will be so happy they did it. And God will tell them, welcome to heaven. You gave me a house on earth when I had no home. And they will be shocked. God, me, give you a home? And that will be an eternal reward. He is so proud of them. See? I want to show you, I want to show you Haggai. Let me not read uh, more. Let me, the last one is Haggai. Say the last one. If I wear you out with teaching you the truth, God will wear you out with his blessings. <laughs> the same way I do deliverance for hours is the same way I teach for hours. Are you ready for Haggai? I think it's the last one I'll read for you today. And then we call it a day. Haggai. Chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. This is God expressing a need that he has to the people. God will always reveal his need to you so that you can meet it. He does. He will always reveal it. He will let you know. No, he will not mean what he will tell you. This is my need. So when you don't meet it, you have decided not to. That says the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways, he told these people. Go up the mountains. Say mountain. And bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it. I'm being glorified. says the Lord. So, I, I need a house in your midst, but I don't have. So, this is what you're going to do. Go up the mountain, cut real trees with real axes, real physical material, come and build me a real physical place. That way you're going to meet this need. And then he told them something down there, which we need to take note as we close. He told them this. He told them. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. When you brought it home, I blew it away. Huh? So when you don't meet God's needs, God will resist you. You will do, please take care of that. He will do what? Resist you. And the brother is just crying. What, what is the problem? <laughs> huh? He's touched. Uh, he, he will wipe our tears. He said, you are not ministering to me. I have no home to stay. He said that. But these people believe me, they were prayerful and keeping the laws of Moses. <laughs> they thought God is okay with them. They thought it is okay. See, we have our priests. Hmm? See, everything is fine. No. I am blew it away. Why, says the Lord of all? Because of my house that is in ruins while every one of you runs to his own house. So actually, comfort never means it is well with you. I can drive the best car, live in the best place, 
comfortable, prayerful, have a church where I go, but God is not, his needs are not met. Never interpret your comfort to mean it is well between you and God. It is always well between you and God when you are ministering to God. It's true. The position of ministering to the Lord assures you considering how God views you. I asked God, God, what meant it be Joshua and do what he did on earth? You know, he's one of the men of God who has no mansion, no, no, no many earthly things you can talk about. What he has left us with is the synagogue church building and the prayer center. Hakuna kitu ingine. And I asked the Lord, what, what did you show this man? He said, I showed him how to minister to me. That is why you see him carrying back of, of food. Give people. Minister. Minister. And he understood the power. And God showed me most of his anointing did not come because he prayed a lot. There are people who pray more than T.B. Joshua. It came from the dimension I'm teaching you. When he realizes his power is going low, he lowered tracks with the food. God loves the hungry. God give him more power. Can you think about somebody who prays so much, so much, and even dogs can't eat crabs from his table? But he's very prayerful. Mutu anaombanga mpaka nimba wawezi lala. Lakini ule musijana ameandika kwa nyumba, hata akulangi. Anawapikia wote safasi na ke, wanakula wanashiba, lakini umusijana hata akipika kuku inaesabiwa. Mingu imeenda wapi mungu moja? Eh? We nilikupata ukilamba supu? Nita kufuta kazi wewe? Shawa yao ikona moto ya musijana na ninjulai ni mbaridi. Na huyo mtu wa meokoka na bebe 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 hey lord lord. And they say they are spiritual and anointed. Hey. If you can't minister to the Lord, you have no relationship with him. Everything you are doing is superficial. So God taught them here. He taught them. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withhold. By the way, let me explain this and we close. I ask the Lord why he shuts the heaven. I mean, Lord, why should you say, if you shut the heaven, you shut. He said, my son, I don't shut heaven. And I don't even withhold the dew. It is the heavens that withhold the dew. I don't. I said, why should, he said, the heavens serve me. Nature serves me. So when they see people who don't serve me, they resist them. So heaven says, I will not give you rain because you are not serving my master. And you see, you come here in South Africa. Because Mungu si kama mchawi hivi ama morogi. Ati anakufungia mvua, anakufungia nini? Hapana. Mvua yenyewe inakata. Because heaven bows to God, clouds bow to God, water bow to God, animal bow to God. So because you don't honor their master, they will also resist you. Adam was told, now the earth was giving you good food. It will resist you because you have resisted its creator. It will give you thorns and thistles. And the world comes from the earth, and the earth is a creature of God. So you, you mess with God, earth will mess with you. It's a principle. <laughs> so it's not God who goes and shut your taps, income taps, nini, nini, nini. No, pesa ina kukata. <laughs> because everything understands it was created to serve him. So you deny money serving God, money will refuse you. 
Even in a marriage setup, when a couple denies serving God, you marry this woman, you deny her serving God, that marriage begins to die. You deny your husband serving God, everything begins to crumble. Anything you have that you cannot serve God with, it starts getting away from you because it knows it was created for his service. And it only gets its fulfillment in serving God. So you got it and you have enslaved it. It cannot serve its master. It lives. That's how people are broke. If you read the Bible, gold was never down in the soil. There was a place called Avila where you collect it on the service. And the pressure, man was never supposed to dig to get minerals. Correct? Mm -hmm. But now when now he turned things over to the devil, he agreed about the devil. They agreed. These things realized man will use us to serve the devil. So they did. Every expensive mineral went very far from man. Read, you'll find man was collecting these things on the service. There was a, a river called Bishon going to Havila, where there is gold. Mm -hmm. And the gold of that land is beautiful. Onyx stones and everything. So you just go to there, that place, this river, and I'm supposed to get into a boat, just row to the place. Gold is on the service. He sinned. He went under the devil. Gold said, ah, ah. It went under. So you dig very many feet and also you have to wash it because it is trying to hide. I am giving you a revelation for which you should honor God forever. Anything you deny to serve God in your life will depart from you. It's a principle. It will just run away. Even the earth has hidden so many things from man because man has rejected God. So these things are hidden by the earth itself. Even where we are sitting, it is possible there is a lot of, pet, uh, uh, a lot of gas, a lot of minerals here and down here, but they are hidden. Lift up your hand and say, Pastor, I understand ministering to the Lord. I totally get it. This has changed me. I will minister to the Lord now for the rest of my life. There are several exciting things lined up in July here at Harvesters Global Church. Enrollment for the next discipleship class is now open. The aim of the discipleship school is to ensure that all the disciples of Jesus Christ bear fruits and experience a revelation of the person of Christ. Classes begin on Saturday, 10 July at 9 a.m. to midday. Sign up today at the reception. My name is Stacy, and I'm from the Rebuilders Group. And um, discipleship has really changed me a lot. Uh, discipleship school has been such a blessing because didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. I didn't know about um, the love of God, the Word of God. I've always struggled with rejection. So having to know all these classes and all how every class was so detailed to every instruction, like literally you're being led and guided how to do things. It's been such a blessing. I feel different. I feel like a new person. I feel like I found my identity in Christ. I feel like I know who I am. I feel more confident. I, I feel like I have boldness. I don't struggle with my self-esteem. I had self-esteem issues growing up because my dad was never in the picture. So it's honestly impacted me in the best way. And I think that God wanted me to be in this Eagles class because I can see it influencing even my friends and I'm so happy about it. William Uchemo Nyango. I'm from the New Believer class. My life has changed totally because I never expected what I, I just got from here because I never, I never knew about the graduation. I just found it in there and I thought this physical graduation was now important. I never knew about the spiritual graduation which has moved me 
it has elevated me to another another point that of my life that I never knew about. Uh, when I was reading the book of Acts about the life of the apostles, how they carried their ministry out, how they persuaded people into Christianity, and we were at least checking how their life, we can change it into today's life and help people come into Christianity. And the discipleship school is there now to impact the knowledge to you because Christ said, I'm the, I'm the truth, the light and the way. So you cannot be into Christianity when you don't know the truth. So when you join the discipleship school, it will impact on the knowledge that you need to know where you are leading to. Because at first, before I joined this discipleship school, I was blind spiritually. But when I joined there, the spiritual blindness was removed and now I've seen the light. And it's amazing. So if you don't even think about, about join it, don't even think about just join it and you'll see what I'm telling you. My name is Francis uh, Bartonje is my second name. Um, I'm in Destiny group. Um, she's my wife. Uh, she's called Sarah. We joined this church in the year 2018 and um, it has really uh, changed how we see life. Uh, initially, life was always like any other life. Discipleship uh, school has really impacted our marriage life. Like, Earlier, we never used to know how to pray as a couple. Then when we came to discipleship, I remember the first time it was his idea, it wasn't my idea. So I was like, what am I going to do? I knew Jesus, so what am I going to do? So um, when the day came, the first day when I came, I was like, I am just coming and I'll not come back, come, come back again. But I kept on coming. The first day, I remember, we were told identity, who are you? You're not what people think you are, but you are what God thinks you are. So one thing, um, when we started the course, we said, ah, let's do it, let's do it. So I remember pulling out the first meeting, she even missed like two classes. But one thing I learned, every day we came to this course, it changed her perception of the thing. And also mine, I've never thought I'd want to be a preacher, to evangelize, to spread the word. But today, as I'm saying, even we had, I've got, we had a conversation with her, we are going to enroll the next Bible course so that we learn, we will want to do more to others using our office, using what resources we have, even if it's going out to minister, we will want to go. So we have really graduated, we are in the next level. I have not seen a graduation like this, not like we love each other. Uko, like the places we did graduation, would graduate and someone just, you, um, I've done my course, I have my certificate, I just walk out. But this one, our pastor is there, he's praying for us and he's saying, you know, just graduating physically, even in heaven, you have graduated. So there's this spirit that you receive. And number two, I'll tell all couples, if you are not, you have not come to discipleship class, you have not started, please start it. We normally say it is hard to start, but the moment you start, the problem is just to start. The moment you start, the rest, you do not know how you'll finish. Yes. We are excited to launch the first HGC Teens Word Fest, a rich three-day conference for 12 to 18-year-olds this July holiday. The conference will be held from the 19th to the 21st of July. Registration is open to all teens. To sign up for any of our programs and events, please visit our reception after the service. We are glad you chose to spend your weekend with us. Welcome to Harvesters Global Church.